Hello again. For various reasons, I haven't been able to record a video in the last few weeks. But today we want to continue with the second and final part about answered prayers. We have already seen that we need faith in God so that he can answer our prayers. Likewise, we should forgive others, pray in the Holy Spirit and live in communion with God and his word. Today we read 1 Peter 3 verse 7. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers might not be hindered. God, in his wisdom, has given us marriage so that we might enjoy it as husband and wife, and at the same time be a picture of Christ and his assembly. In marriage, husbands and wives have different duties and responsibilities. This verse is specifically addressed to husbands, because wives need special care. This care is necessary so that our prayers are not hindered. God wants us to live together according to the different nature God has given to man and woman. A woman is referred to here as a weaker vessel. A weaker vessel needs special attention, care and tender treatment, not only in relation to the body, but also in relation to the soul. A cold, harsh word is felt much more by a woman with her tender heart than by a man. Weaker does not mean spiritual weaker, but really physically and emotionally weaker. And so husbands should give all honor to their wives and never despise the weaker one. The Bible clearly shows us in several places that it is precisely the weak that is precious to God. As husbands, we are required to honor our wives, to guide and protect them with all care and love. We know that as men, we are especially in need of grace to do this. This leads us to prayer, preferably into a united prayer of husband and wife together. What a pity if we cannot bend our knees together because of misconduct. Even if we pray together, but our inner thoughts are not in agreement, our prayers are hindered. How can God accept united prayers when in reality they are not united at all? Proverbs 21 verse 13 says, Whoever shuts his ears to the cry of the poor will also cry himself and not be heard. So if we are indifferent to the need of others, then our prayers will not be heard. If our hearts are cold, how will God hear our prayers? If we put on Christ, our hearts will be warm and always give a fitting response to the needs of others. And we will then also experience God answering us in times of need. We also find the reference to unanswered prayer in the letter of James. James says in chapter 4 verse 3, You ask and do not receive, because you ask amiss, and you might spend it on your pleasures. It might be that something is wrong with our prayer. We must ask ourselves what our request is and what motivations guide us in making that request. In general, the first thing we ask for is that our particular problems will end, for example. But what specifically are we asking for? Have we also asked for wisdom that our request responds to God's will? And what motivation drives me to pray? Is my only desire that Christ be glorified, or is it also my own glory? Sometimes, God also makes us wait so that our hearts might be changed. He wants us to look at things more and more from His point of view. He wants us to change us, but also at the same time show us His glory and greatness. Let us trust Him. Let Him prepare us. And then also accept every answer as coming from Him. 
then we will experience more answered prayers in a wonderful way, very specific and very personal.